Hey man, what are you watching? Oh, I'm watching this 1953 Japanese film called Ugetsu. Um, it's directed by Kenji Mizoguchi, who was kind of a terrible person. More on that later. Um, but yeah, it was really enjoyable. Is it any good? Yeah, I think so. Let me tell you more about it. Perfect. Ugetsu is a jiraigeki film based on two short stories by Ueda Akinari and also takes inspiration from Decore by Guy de Maupassant. Set in the 16th century, it centers around two couples, Genjiro and Miyagi, their son, and Tobe and Ohama. Genjiro is an opportunistic potter and farmer seeking to profit off of the chaos of the war, despite his wife's warnings. Tobe, a fellow farmer, wants to become a samurai, but he is ridiculed for this. When their village is attacked, they are forced to leave. Miyagi and her son return to the village while Genjiro, Tobe, and Ohama continue to the city. Genjiro's pottery sells extremely well to the interest of Lady Wakasa, who invites him to her mansion. Meanwhile, Tobe buys samurai armor and weaponry. In his absence, however, Ohama is raped by a group of soldiers, becoming a fallen woman who working at a brothel. At her mansion, Lady Wakasa explains to Genjiro that she and her servant are the two remaining survivors of the original clan, and Genjiro falls in love with her. Following this, Miyagi is killed by rogue soldiers. Meanwhile, Tobe rises through the ranks by falsely claiming to have killed a general. Upon a visit to a brothel, Tobe finds Ohama, who pleads that they both give up their immoral livelihoods and return to the village. Genjiro learns that Lady Wakasa is a ghost and that he will die if he does not return home. Genjiro then confesses that he has a family and leaves the manor. When he awakes, the manor is no more. He heads home and is greeted by Miyagi and Genichi, only to realize that Miyagi too is a ghost. Reunited, Genjiro, Tobe, and Ohama vow to live simple lives. The film ends with Genichi paying his respects to Miyagi at her grave as the adults make pottery. Produced by the Daiei Film Company and released in 1953, Ugetsu won the Silver Lion at the Venice Film Festival and is one of the films credited for putting Japanese cinema on the map. This is an amazing feat as the production was chaotic, as Mizuguchi bullied his performers, never looked at the camera himself, had daily script rewrites, and only insisted on changes on set only after everything was built. His authority was not questioned, however, as he was already a prominent director in Japan. This scene takes influence from no theater, an ancient form of Japanese dance drama. No theater became a distinctive form of dance around the 14th century, and it was typically performed for warrior classes on auspicious occasions. The stories in no theater are told through elaborate movements as well as visual appearance. There are five types of no theater, but this scene in Ugetsu primarily borrows from Kiri and Katsuramono. Kiri plays typically feature supernatural beings, which can be seen with Lady Wakasa, as she is the main ghost character of Ugetsu. Her flat, washed out appearance also closely resembles that of female masks used in new theater. Katsura Mono plays often center around beautiful female characters who engage with smooth, elegant movement, like Lady Wakasa does, and music, like the singing of Lady Wakasa's nurse in this scene. In this scene, Lady Wakasa dances for Genjiro. The scene spans four minutes and only three different shots are used. A long take tracking shot, a short cutaway shot, and another long take. For the entirety of the dance, Mizuguchi employs one long take which lasts for over two minutes as he believed that the most precise and specific expression for intense psychological moments could only occur with long takes. He also veers away from close-ups and analytical editing throughout the film. In addition, Mizuguchi stylizes Ugetsu with chiaroscuro lighting to emphasize the contrast of black and white. Through these elements, Lady Wakasa's dance for Genjiro is a perfect demonstration of Kenji Mizuguchi's style. In a letter to one of his collaborators, Mizuguchi noted that the violence of war unleashed by those in power on a pretext of the national good must overwhelm the common people with suffering, moral and physical. Ugetsu's focus on the violence of war is reflective of post-World War II Japan. Through its characters, the film depicts the ruinous effects of Japan's militarism and expansionism before and during World War II. The goal of expansion wasn't unprecedented, as Japan annexed Korea in 1910 and occupied the Chinese 
Japanese region of Manchuria. However, the nation's intentions became more explicit after the Great Depression. With the ballooning population and the greater need for resources, the political right argued for more aggressive military tactics. The glorification of the military can be seen in Tobei's character as he aspires to join the samurai. However, the idealized image of the Japanese soldier is subverted as it is a group of soldiers that rape Ohama, Tobei's wife, and kill Miyagi. The senseless violence these women experience mirror the unfortunate realities of Imperial Japan's victims. In 1937, Japanese soldiers looted, raped, and killed hundreds of thousands of civilians in Nanjing, and throughout the war, women in Japanese-occupied territories like Korea and the Philippines were forced into sexual slavery as comfort women. Mizuguchi's critical depiction of the military and general anti-war stance could be an expression of guilt and regret, not only for Japan's actions during wartime, but also for Mizuguchi's own contributions, as he directed the military's propaganda film The 47 Ronin in 1941. With the inevitable end of World War II began the American occupation of Japan, which lasted from 1945 to 1952. Catherine Russell's overview of Ugetsu posits that Japan had endured a series of shifting ideologies, material scarcity, economic collapse, national defeat, and foreign occupation, and that by the film's release in 1953, the precious fantasy of cultural sovereignty was finally utterly ruined, like the bleak remains of the Kutsuki Manor when Genjiro awakes from his dream. The Scars of War by Sophia Walker also asserts that Ugetsu is an expression of war guilt, and that the forgiveness that Tobe and Genjiro received from their wives for their acts of greed reflects the reconciliation the nation of Japan seeked. Wow, this movie seems misogynistic and sexist. In many ways, this hurts the movie. It makes it tough to focus on the story when the characters are continuously degrading women. Even Lady Wakasa, who almost can be described as a femme fatale, has only motivations involving men. She wants a man to marry and must receive her father's approval. After death, Miyagi forgives Genjiro and wants to see his work. As previously established, Mizuguchi was, miso- uh, was a misogynist and bullied his actresses. I mean, despite that, the sexism could be argued as a critical part of the movie. It's incredibly accurate for the time period set in. And not only that, but the historical context adds to it. Ugetsu was released after World War II, and it is an anti-war film. It almost provides an incentive for the audience. War will cause you horrible tragedies, and it will cause great pain to the women you hold dearly in your life. Wow. Now I guess I have a lot to think about. Thank you for showing me this film. Yeah, no problem. To learn more about Kenji Mizuguchi's Ugetsu, we recommend checking out the book Mizuguchi in Japan, written by Mark Lefanyu, and Brian Eggert's essay on Ugetsu for deep focus review. Thank you.